Hey guys, once again, welcome back. I got another how-to for you. This is a pretty requested how-to video. Um, and this is having to do with track work and the layout and tortoise switch machines. So most people, when they construct their layout and put down their track work, um, they plan to add the tortoise switch machine. So they will um, put the switch machines in before um, they lay their track, and that way it's a little easier um, to install them. What I'm going to show you how to do is how to install a tortoise switch machine after you've laid the track um, and after the layout's already built. So as you can see here, this is kind of a decision I made afterwards once we decided to install the signaling system is to have um, CTC controlled and thrown switches. Um, so I went ahead and ordered some tortoise switch machines. I got a 12 pack for my mainline switches around the layout. And uh, this is one that I'm going to show you how we do. So I've already kind of done a few steps here about a month or two ago. Um, that I won't be able to show you, but I'll be able to uh, talk talk to you about what I did here. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how to install these switch machines um, on the layout. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is drill a hole here. Um, oftentimes the torch switch machines are mounted under the layout kind of like this, and the uh, mechanism here um, will turn the switch back and forth. And a lot of people will put that mechanism right under the layout. But because we're installing this on an existing switch, and we're gonna do this without removing the switch, um, we're gonna put the hole on the side. And I'll show you how we're gonna cover that up later, and you'll ba barely be able to notice um, that hole is even there in the first place. Because um, as you notice, we are on the, uh, the walkway side of the layout, so this will be something that you see. Um, but again, once it's scenic and ballasted, and we have the switch machine in place, you won't be able to notice it at all. So. The first thing you want to do is drill that hole, and uh, that's about a quarter inch wide, and uh, you just want to make sure you have enough room and a little extra um, for the switch to go back and forth. So you can kind of take a look at the distance between the switch points, and I probably tripled that distance, giving myself a little room on each side. The next thing I did was I went ahead and removed the uh, little stub here. If you take a look on the back side, Right here, you'll see there's a little nub sticking up here. What I did is I removed that here, and then I took a very small drill bit, just a little bit bigger than uh, the connecting rod that comes with the tortoise switch machine, and drilled that into there. And what you have to do while you drill that is to take a piece of cork or a piece of wood and put it under there while you drill down. And again, sorry I have to talk you through all this. I already did this a month ago and uh, wasn't thinking about doing a video while I was doing it. Um, so that is um, how you get that hole there. And again, you just need to make sure it's like on plywood or something. There's going to be no supporting beams or anything like that underneath there that will interfere with the uh, tortoise switch machine and its movement. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is remove the locking mechanism for the switch. This is a Pico switch. All my switches on the layout are Picos. And as you can see, it kind of snaps back and forth, which is great for um, non-switch machine controlled switches and turnouts. But however, since we have a switch machine, we're gonna want to remove that little locking mechanism. And the reason for that is because the switch machine motor simply won't be able to overcome the force of that spring. So um, as you can see, there's a little guard here and it has two little um, metal pieces that are bent over to hold it in place. All I'm gonna do is take my X-Acto knife, bend those out. And I'm just going to pull this out right here. And if I can get a hold of this, you can see there's the little piece right there that is the spring that locks it in place. So now you can see this moves freely back and forth. So now that we've removed the spring and we have no more need to uh, access this little panel right here, we're going to put that back in place and line it back up like it was before. And the way I can tell is I weathered this switch previously, um, so I can tell where those little um, sprues were that hold it in place. And since they're metal, you can just take some needle nose pliers and bend them right back in place. And then what I usually do is uh, push them down on top just a little bit to make sure it's nice and snug. And again, now that that locking me mechanism is gone, this piece really has no function anymore. So if you don't want it or you don't like it, you can you can remove it. So here you can see that the switch moves back and forth. And while I have it zoomed in here, one 
important thing to note that while you're drilling your hole, you want to make sure that while it's all the way over, you want to get that hole as close to the switch as possible. Um, otherwise, if your hole is too far out, you're not going to be able to bend the wire enough to make it um, move properly. All right, so we're under here, uh, under the layout, and uh, the next thing I'm going to go and do is kind of find the right position um, to install the tortoise switch machine, and then we'll go ahead and screw it in. So here's my tortoise switch machine. As you can see, I went ahead and already installed the little connecting rod and then the pivoting mechanism. You can find the instructions of how to do this in your tortoise switch machine manual. So what I'm going to do is uh, line this up under here. I'll get some of these wires out of the way. I'm going to slide it into the hole. That's the hole we drilled previously. I'm going to make sure that's 100% lined up right in the middle of the hole there. And then I'm just going to do two because after I get two screws in, then I can go ahead and put in the other ones once it's already installed. Alright, so I went ahead and mounted the switch machine. We'll go ahead and work on the rod later. Like I said, that's just was kind of to test it out. So anyways, what we're going to go and do now is um, install the wiring. And I'm not going to go and talk about the wiring and how to operate these. You can look at a different video for that. Um, right now I'm just kind of going to show you guys how I install it. And if you guys want, I can try to make a video showing how these are controlled. These specifically are controlled through a Digitrax SE8C signal decoder, which is then controlled via computer. So um, anyways, what I'm going to do is take my black and my red here. These are the two wires that I'm using to control it. I'm going to stick it in through the back, which can be pretty difficult sometimes. And you really got to make sure that tip is twisted and um, that you don't have any little spare wires coming out there, else it'll be a lot more difficult. So as you can see, I got it through the front there. What I'm going to do next is bend it up. I'm going to solder that just like that, and I'm going to solder the red wire the exact same way as well. All right, so once you have the switch machine installed and wired underneath the layout, the very last thing you want to do is connect the uh, switch machine to the actual switch itself. And uh, you do that um, via the connecting rod, which is supplied with the um, tortoise switch machine. And so it's basically a straight shot up through the hole. The only thing you're going to do is at the top of the, at the, top of the uh, rod, you're going to make a little bracket shape like this and you can just bend that rod real easily with some needle nose pliers and what that is going to do it's going to sit here and since that hole isn't directly underneath the uh, the edge of the little switch point here I'm not sure what you want to call that as you can see the hole is just a little bit off center when you're looking straight down so when you create a little piece like this and this would be this isn't the actual rod but when you create a little shape like this at the top of the rod you can see that you can move it over just like that. And that's exactly what I've done here. Um, if we can get it to focus. And so you can see I kind of bent it there. And um, after that, you want to test it and uh, hook it up. And I um, didn't glue this just in case I ever do need to remove it. And there really is no need to glue it. And um, you're going to have a little excess wire on top here. I just took some little snippers there and cut off the excess wire, leaving just a little bit of extra on top there. Um, in case I ever need to redo something, I have a little bit of extra uh, room to play with there. And uh, so now that that's installed, the switch machine works. You can see it uh, has a positive hold on the switch and it'll stay there. One other thing that uh, you may notice is that there's kind of a big ugly hole there that you really can't fill with anything because it needs the room to move back and forth. What I'm going to hide it with is a uh, Details West switch, switch machine here. I just have it installed on a little piece of cork. As you can see, I cut out the little section there on the bottom so the rod can move back and forth. And you can install that right there, and you can barely even be able to tell that uh, that hole is there. And so basically, you can apply scenery all around it except for that one little hole right there, which is 
where the switch machine moves back and forth. So anyways guys, that is how you install a tortoise switch machine without having to remove or rip up any track. And um, if you have any more questions, feel free to uh, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you. So anyways guys, once again, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for more how-to videos, I'll be sure to uh, take a look at those and try to do them in the future as well. So once again, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.